early 15th century, on the northern outskirts of Florence, lay the decaying Silverstream Monastery of San Marco. In 1436, an austere reform branch of the Dominican Order, known as the Observance, obtained permission from the Pope to take over the buildings, most of which were in ruins. Through the patronage of Cosimo de' Medici, San Marco was rebuilt by the architect Michelozzo to create a Dominican priory. The priory and church were completely restored by 1452. This 15th century view shows the renovated buildings with the cloisters of the priory and the church. Most of the priory survives, but the church now has an 18th century façade. Little remains of the 14th century original, and the only part of Michelozzo's restoration, which can be seen from the square, is the Campanile, which incorporates classicising piers in its design. From the cloister, remains of the pointed arch windows can be seen. One of the windows still has some of its Gothic tracery. Cosimo's refurbishment of the church was limited, but his reconstruction of the priory was extensive. It followed a standard pattern. Round the first cloister are the public buildings, the hospice, the refectory and the chapter house. There's also a second, smaller refectory. On the upper floor are two novel features, individual cells instead of the usual dormitories and a great library. Beyond, there's a second cloister with a service range and guest rooms. At the back of the priory were extensive walled gardens. The visitor first enters the cloister of Sant'Antonino with the wall of the church on the left. The principal buildings of the priory are reached from this cloister. Straight ahead is the chapter house. To the right of it, the refectory, with the windows of the cells visible above it. And to the right again, the hospice. On each side of the cloister, five arches rest on columns. These are set on a low parapet. The columns are made of a local sandstone called Pietra Serena and they have ionic capitals. The surface above is plain, apart from a dentilated cornice. The walls of the upper storey are also undecorated, with the small windows of the cells surrounded by simple frames. This restraint is appropriate for a building belonging to this reform branch of the Dominican order. The cloister passageways are covered by groin vaults. Alternate vaults are decorated with the Medici spheres or palle, a reminder of Cosimo's role in the building of San Marco. On the side of the cloister nearest the entrance is the hospice, which is now an art gallery. It provided accommodation for pilgrims and visitors to the city. Fras were expected to welcome guests to the Priory with the same care as they would Christ. To remind them of this duty, over the doorway of the hospice is a frescoed lunette of Christ as a pilgrim being received by two Dominicans. At right angles to the hospice lies the refectory. This had survived from the old Silverstream Monastery and its restoration was one of the first tasks undertaken by Michelozzo. Its approach through an antechamber, 
where the frows wash before meals. The refectory was rebuilt with a series of vaults supporting the new range of cells directly above it. This 16th century fresco includes a scene of St Dominic and his companions being fed by angels. It replaces a 15th century crucifixion. On one side, steps lead up to a pulpit from which passages of scripture would have been read to the frows as they ate in silence. The chapter house of a Dominican priory had to be near the church because liturgical practice required processions from the church to the chapter house. It's obvious that Michelozzo had to adapt an earlier building from the brackets at the base of the cloister vaulting. The one over the doorway is like others round the cloister. But over the left-hand window there wasn't enough room and he had to compromise with a different design. Because of its ceremonial importance, the chapter house tended to have a prominent entrance facade, usually with a central door and two large windows. Inside the chapter house, the friars met to attend the daily chapter of faults, to elect the prior and to admit candidates to the order. Here they would also receive eminent visitors. This impressive crucifixion is by Fra Angelico, who was a friar of San Marco, and in the words of its 15th century chronicler, the finest master in the art of painting in Italy. Originally the sky would have been blue, but over the years the red priming has been revealed. At the top of the painting, directly above the figure of Christ, is a detail of a pelican feeding her young with her blood. This image was used in religious art as a metaphor for the crucifixion. On one side of Christ appears the repentant thief, whose state of grace is shown by his youthful face and tranquil expression. By contrast, the face of the unrepentant thief is unshaven and tortured. 